guys, this is Deepika from MyTutorialRack.com. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss another interview question. So the question is, how do you process more than 50,000 records in a trigger? So the solution is, the first thing is, you cannot retrieve more than 50,000 records through your SOQL call in a single context because it is going to hit your governor limits. So the solution is using batch apex to process more than 50,000 records. So in this batch apex, you're going to divide this 50,000 records in multiple batches, and then you're going to process each of those batches one by one. So that is how you're going to process more than 50,000 records. Now, the next thing is there are two different types of batch apex. So one we have is a stateful and the other one we have is a stateless. By default, the batch apex is stateless. So each execution of the apex job is considered as a discrete transaction. So what do I mean by that is, so let's say you have thousand records to process. Now, what we can do is if you're using batch apex, we are going to process these in five batches. The first batch will have 200 records. The second will have its another next 200. The third one will have the next 200. The fourth batch will have the next 200. And the fifth one will have the next 200. So total of 1,000 records will be processed by th these five batches. Each of the batch will have its own transaction. And you will not be able to retain the values of the variables in between these transactions. If you want to retain the instance member values in between the transaction, what you can do is you can implement an interface called as database dot of stateful. So in order to make the batch apex stateful, you can implement this interface. In that way, what will happen is you will be able to maintain the state in between those transactions. Otherwise, each of this batch will be executed in its own transaction and it will be stateless, means you will not be able to retain any values in between those transactions. If you want to do that, then in that case, you have to implement the stateful interface. And the reason we do that is if you want to count, if you want to summarize the records as they are getting processed, if you want to store the values of variables in between the transactions, you can do that by making or by implementing the stateful interface.